Hello YouTube, Z here and I'm bringing you the second episode of our Duna Outpost series. Uh, we're going to go ahead and launch our resupply vehicle along with another tug. Um, and we also have another treat in there, so uh, let's get to it. Alright, so now with uh, KRS-2 underway, uh, we'll go ahead and describe it a little bit. Now it's basically just a couple fuel tanks strapped together. I put another mainsail engine on there uh, to kind of be that orbital engine again. Uh, but we're basically trying to bring as much fuel as possible to orbit, uh, to dock with a tug, and bring on to, uh, to our Duna outpost. Um, as usual, uh, you know, being out of the game for a while, I end up using way more fuel than I, I probably should have. It's probably attributed to that engine, uh, which I'll have to do something about. Um, and another thing I realize is I, I can't decouple that uh, second uh, tank you see there. So we pretty much end up taking this entire thing a little bit on our way to Duna, uh, and we get rid of it eventually. Now, since we've already shown you uh, the space tug launch and docking in the first episode of this series, I went ahead and skipped that. Um, and I mentioned this treat earlier, so you probably saw in the first video we launched what I like to call the uh, uh, the Duna uh, re reconnaissance orbiter. Um, used to launch this vehicle here, you can see. I, I just want to give a shout out to the Curbex guys. I'll provide a link in the description uh, for the spaceport website. But these engines which are the replica Merlin engines that you're going to find on uh, any SpaceX rocket in real life, uh, are extremely efficient in KSP. Uh, I'm not a big fan of mods usually, uh, but these engines were just uh, a great fit. Um, you know, and if you're having trouble launching stuff and you're trying to go along with this, this setup for engines here, uh, you know, maybe that's going to help you guys. So, uh, again, I'll put that link in the description. Uh, but, so we're, we're bringing this, uh, we're calling it a communication satellite over to Duna. Um, but we're not launching it on its own. We're basically going to orbit up Rendezvous and dock with the uh, KRS-2 vessel um, that already has a tug on it, and we're going to basically take this entire thing with us, kind of knock out a few birds with one stone, uh, so to speak. So you can see uh, I'm kind of going a little bit crazy here, losing my mind. Uh, if there's anything I can tell you about docking and, and getting used to it, it's that you have to be extremely patient uh, because it's so easy to just, just get extremely frustrated. Um, and I have multiple times. Uh, so you can see, I mean, I've been out of the game for a while here. This is my eh, probably fourth docking, really getting back into it. Uh, and, and I'm still having a hard time. Uh, I know there were some questions in the comments previously uh, about a potential, uh, maybe a tutorial or maybe just an explanation video. Um, if I can get around to doing that, I, I would definitely help or, uh, like to help you guys as much as I possibly can. I know uh, some other good channels out there have some great videos as well. Um, so if you look around, you know, if we don't have anything up and you look around, uh, there's a lot of good stuff out there. But what I like to do in a nutshell is basically uh, burn to a higher orbit, probably about 10 to 15,000 feet, or uh, I'm sorry, meters, <laughs> uh, higher than what I'm actually trying to rendezvous with. And then uh, we kind of, you know, speed up time, use the time warp, and I wait till it gets pretty much right below me, if you will, um, after I've already set up the descending nodes to zero. And then I just pretty much descend onto it. Uh, and then when I get within a certain distance, um, I aim towards the, after I've already set the target, uh, you kill the velocity, the relative velocity between the two, so the speed that you're moving at or away from each other. And then you just slowly, gradually move in, which I'm uh, starting to do right here. Um, so, yeah, maybe, maybe we can do a video later on in the future uh, that can kind of break that down step by step uh, for, for those folks out there that might be having a little bit of hard time because it's it's definitely no easy feat and it, and it can be extremely frustrating um so all this put together here you know i end up burning way too much fuel um 
I mean, I understand right here, this is the, the uh, comm satellite they're going to bring with it, but um, it just this entire mission so far has started out, uh, you know, not as much as, or not, not as good as I would like it to. So we're going to keep going with it here. I'm going to get this uh, satellite docked up. Um, we're going to ditch this transfer or uh, this launch vehicle per se. And then uh, we'll be on our way out to Dune again with our with our tug. I think I'm going to re redesign this tug too, um, along with uh, you know, bigger fuel tanks. So, uh, yeah, we'll pick up uh, when we're on our way to Dune. All right, so now that we've got rid of our launch vehicle there for the satellite, um, we're going to go ahead and get oriented or uh, set up with our escape velocity or uh, escape vectors from Kerbin orbit or influence, if you will, and on our way to Duna. Now, I'm kind of eyeballing this, as you can see. This looks right. I've seen a bunch of videos um, on YouTube. I, I'm not a fan, like I said, of mods before, so I haven't used you know the protractors and MechJev and all that. Um, in one point, or uh, I'm sorry, point 18. So I'm trying to tr just really figure this out, and actually it works in my my favor here, uh, surprisingly. Uh, and we get a pretty good rendezvous, uh, and almost pretty quick too. It just takes a couple seconds, and you know, like I said before, patience. And you gotta have a ton of it. And, and once you get better at the game, you know, it'll it'll come easier to you. Um, so we get set up here. Now we've already kind of got a. Uh, the nodes that are coming up and the orbit there is kind of uh, the picture kind of distorts it there we go so we're still kind of ascending above the or orbit of duna uh, on this i guess approach um you know we can take care of that later you can see the green arrows after you set up the the target or you select your target uh, the green arrows are on the left and the right and that's what we call descending nodes now you don't want those to have any values meaning you want them to be zero uh, both of them which means that you are not going to ascend or descend, so you're not going to climb or go below uh, the relative orbit of you know whatever you're approaching. And that could be uh, anything in orbit around Duna, around Kerbin, around you know any planet or you know celestial body in the game. So uh, make sure that you guys are are kind of nullifying that, and and you do that by going to the node. Um, just like you would a periapsis or anything like that, and and burning in a in a in a way that it brings it down. And you can usually set that up with um, the uh, the flight planner there, the maneuver planner. So we got our uh, Duna encounter set up eh, pretty close. Um, we get it closer once we actually head out to 
or uh, just send me a note because that's going to play a huge factor in the uh, in the distance. So we'll get ahead and uh, and get burning out there and uh, see what we can do. So we're approaching our descending node. As you can see, I got rid of those fuel tanks. Uh, we had pretty much burned up all the fuel that was, you know, meant to resupply the Duna outpost, uh, unfortunately. So we're going to have to work that. I've already got the comm satellite on here, so I kind of just went with it. Um, I'm already out there anyway, so I didn't want this mission to be a complete failure. Um, I say that now. So we're coming up. Uh, so foolishly, even from here, just looking back, Right there, when I sped up, you can see that the station is orbiting the other way, so um, the opposite direction from where I'm approaching my Duna orbit, and I failed to see this. Um, I could have corrected it farther out, and now that we're we're in the uh, influence here of Duna and we're orbiting, it's just, I mean, it's not impossible to fix. It is for us because we don't have enough fuel. If we had more fuel and or uh, more powerful engines, potentially we could fix it. Um, and I tried to later on, but I kind of just, uh, like I said, wanted this mission to, to come out successful somehow. So we try our arrow breaking again here. Um, now, according to the uh, KSP Wikipedia page, the Duna atmosphere begins at, oh, about right now. As you can see, that um, uh, the atmosphere indicator is, is starting to come down, indicating that we're getting into thicker and thicker atmosphere. And we're basically using that to slow us down. The, uh, the way an aero brake works is you're, you're using the air resistance of a body's atmosphere to kind of slow you down. But you have to calculate it just right so you don't go or so you don't slow down too much. Um, and right here, I didn't go low enough because of just that. I didn't want to end up on the surface. So I'm having to burn retrograde to kind of assist that uh, uh, to get that speed down, which is. Um, just, <laughs> it's just terrible planning um, and uh, in, a, in a huge waste of fuel. But like I said, at this point, we're just trying to salvage the mission. Now, talking about the uh, comm satellite we have here, this uh, this Duna reconnaissance orbiter, um, I noticed, you know, we might as well not waste the fuel on that and get it into a nice solid orbit. Um, taking a look outside the window here, that's just a gorgeous view. Um, if you've read the news lately, you know that there's a possibility that uh, some people might be seeing that view from uh, from a capsule here in the next decade or so. It's, uh, I think that's pretty exciting, but I digress. So we kind of spin out here. I'm trying to get all the way out here so we can uh, set this satellite um, in, a, in a decent orbit, and we can you know, utilize that that momentum to kind of set it up higher and and get it uh, stabilized. You know, that'll be the one thing that goes right for this mission. Um, so we kind of we undock it here, um, and we kind of leave it for a bit. Um, kind of majestic looking, and I believe I believe we have Ike in the background. Yeah, I think that's Ike. Um, but as we get this thing deployed, 
Um, and, I mean, this thing worked just fine. Made sure we had solar panels, not only in folding, but some just sitting on the side just in case I had to recharge the batteries passively. Um, <laughs> I've learned that mistake. If you saw the uh, the orbiter in the previous video, um, I will admit that that one, that one definitely died because I, I didn't deploy the solar panels um, after I tried to aero brake. And, uh, and the batteries definitely ran out, so that was that was no good. But at least we got to record this one coming out. So we kind of raise a little bit. I, I end up putting this thing, oh, about, oh, we'll say, I think it's 400 uh, kilometers or so high. Can't really remember for sure. But right here, I'm trying to test my theory of trying to spin this orbit back so I can get everything going. Well, as you can see, uh, that didn't work. So we try to come in again, uh, try not to burn any more fuel to <laughs> um, to get us on a solid orbit, uh, you know, and for any hopes of a future rescue mission, which I think will be definitely plausible. And what do you know? We come in too low. So as our altitude descends here, um, you can see the uh, atmosphere gauge coming down. Uh, the atmosphere is getting thicker and thicker, and the air resistance is becoming greater. And so our speed just starts to drop like a brick. <laughs> so what do we have to do? Well, I don't want to end up on the surface. I didn't plan for um, this capsule to end up on the surface. There are no parachutes, and I'd rather not kill any Kerbals today. So we have to turn around, and we have to burn prograde. So we have to keep increasing our orbit in order to stay above um, Duna. So incredibly frustrating. Um, but this just kind of makes it fun. It's going to set us up for a future rescue mission, with, which I think is going to be a blast. And uh, if anything, these guys can be our first down to the surface, our first crew, and then we can, you know, bring our future lander down and pick them up instead of having to spin all our, our, uh, or spend all our fuel trying to switch orbits twice. So, but the uh, the orbiter is set up pretty close. We're getting there. Uh, I think we. I think we include the rest of this here. Yeah, we should. Uh, we got the burn coming up. I get it nice and solid. Um, and I kind of just settle the tug and the corresponding attached uh, stranded capsule in this orbit. Um, you know, just kind of hang out. I think the more infrastructure we can get around, do you know, the, the, the better it's going to turn out. Especially, uh, you know, hopefully the, the save files are going to carry on and. We won't have to redo all this when mining actually comes out uh, on point 0.19 for KSP. Whenever that'll be. Um, who knows? So our satellite is set up for relay comms. It's going to be sending those messages back to uh, Carbon saying, Hey, uh, we had a slight glitch here in the system, and uh, we're going to need some rescue, uh, which will potentially be in the next episode. Uh, as a last ditch effort here, I try to save the uh, the orbits. Doesn't exactly work out. Uh, it almost looks like it would, and it would if we had enough fuel, but uh, unfortunately we didn't. So we're going to leave it here for now. Again, uh, this is Z. Uh, if you guys have time coming up on Friday, uh, check out the next launch of the Falcon 9 from SpaceX. It should be pretty cool. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, if you have any comments or questions or anything like that, please leave them below and we will see you next time.